Today I talk about the fear of PvP, judging your teammate's skill, and how to tell a good habit from a bad habit. Welcome to Mind Games TV, episode 59. Today I don't have my microphone, so I'm using this microphone. And also, um, I've been getting a lot of phone calls. It's the it's the third week of competitive play in the North American and EU LCSs, and stuff is starting to go bad, and teams are calling. So my phone's ringing off the hook. This is kind of what happened last year uh, at this exact time. So it's really exciting. It's a great time for sales. Um, anyway. Uh, that's been happening, and I get to work from home today, so you guys get to see a new background. I'm trying to find a better background for the show at the office, so we'll see if I can succeed in that. Let's get into the show. First question is from Freakbane on Reddit, so I put the link down below if you want to go read his post. This is on the Reddit Summoner School, which is one of my favorite places to hang out because uh, people there have problems, and I have solutions, and also I get to learn tips on playing Zed. Sorry, everybody who hates Zed. Freakbane asks, how do you bypass the fear of performing in PvP games? Freakbane is basically uh, got badly ranked in the previous season, scared of playing, and now says, uh, I feel constantly the burden to perform. There's no room for failure. So I was afraid to play PvP, human versus human. Um, this is a really good question. I... Hopefully I have a I have a good answer. Let me think about this. The th the thing that I want to recognize is that the pressure uh is not a bad thing and it doesn't go away. So accept the pressure. Lean into the pressure. Accept the fact that you feel you will feel the burden and you will feel the um the pressure to perform and you will feel bad when you misplay. And these things are emotions that humans have in order to motivate ourselves, in order to make us get more focused, in order to make us excited to train, in order to make us um, try harder. They're quite natural and they might go away through exposure. So you'll play a bunch of ranked and they'll eventually dissipate. But that's not a given and it's also not necessary because instead of trying to like exposure yourself through this and make them go away just through sheer exposure what you should be doing is saying i i don't care if they're there or not because i'm just going to like accept the pressure and commit myself to playing my my style and losing when i lose and win when i win and one of the ways that i work on it in a very holistic way is to always think about learning i think about um only letting myself play fearlessly so anytime i'm playing fearfully I, I try to reorient myself and say, no, I will learn more if I play fearlessly. You never want to like hold yourself back. Uh, and then I, I just make sure that I'm always thinking, okay, I learned. What did I learn? What did I learn from this game, from this situation, from losing, from being outplayed, from, from losing these other people who are better than me or worse than me and I lost them anyway. So that helps you take a holistic long-term perspective. And also... If you don't really care about growing like you're in rank, if you don't care about climbing up the ladder, then you need to think about what did you learn about yourself and that you could apply in your life to make it worthwhile. So if you if you are like, well, I don't, I don't I'm afraid of playing ranked and I also don't really care about climbing the ladder, so but I want to do it um, anyway. So but learning how to pl how to like get better at league is not my motivation, then you want to think about where in life are you called upon to lean into pressure? And the answer is everywhere. And and anytime that you train that, it's a good thing. Like, for example, with Fnatic, one thing, um, and not just with Fnatic, with all of the teams I've worked with, we try to encourage discipline outside of the game. Things like make your food or put your dishes away um, or sit up straight. And... Um, by the way, Peter, uh, formerly of CLG, now on TCM, best sitting posture of any league player I've ever worked with. Like, it's amazing. He's just like sitting up perfectly straight. And it's not like, it's not like a horrible, like super back tension, like super tight ramrod straight. It's just like very casual kind of like I work out and I have muscles on my back kind of sitting up straight. So if you want to learn how to sit up straight, ask, ask him on Twitter. He'll send you a picture. 
Actually, I think I have a picture of him from the back. I was so impressed. I was like, I gotta take a picture of this. Oh my god, that sounded really bad. Um, anyway, moving on. What was I talking about? Right, leaning into the pressure. So you can you can learn things in life through discipline that you can apply in the game by applying that discipline. And likewise, you can discipline yourself to approach fearful situations and be brave. And then you can do that when you're uh, at a bar and you need to go ask a girl out. Or when you are um, in a class and you want to ask a professor a question that you know you didn't hear. And you want to say, like, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Could you tell me again? So those things are possible. Please take advantage of them. Please see it as a holistic system of life in which you are growing as a person when you throw yourself into these pressure situations. And that is how I overcome the fear, is that you, you don't. You never bypass the fear. You go through the fear. Brad asks, Sometimes it's hard to quantify how skilled a teammate is. How do I filter out bad or biased opinions and find the truth? Brad, this is a really good question. I'm not sure that this is possible. Like uh, filtering out bad or biased opinions and finding truth. I don't think truth is possible. Uh, I think that there, maybe there's mathematical truth, but even that is based on a system of, of understanding reality that we've like invented. You know, and we can say the universe works this way because, well, okay, that's getting off into into the science of science. So let me go back to reality here. When we're dealing with performance and we're dealing with human beings, truth is uh, is relative to your point of view and to paradigms. So, for example, fat people are are fat. That's like a paradigm that we see nowadays. Previously, fat people were like rich or fat people were beautiful or, or whatever. Like the way that you see the world has and, and other people in performance has always changed through time. It used to be that we thought sport was delightful if people were getting eaten by lions. Now we think that's disgusting. That's not sport. Um, right now we think it's really amazing and awesome if like people in massive hunks of metal like burning fossil fuels like speed around a track at really high speeds and risk like killing and maiming themselves and other people in a hundred years maybe we'll think that that's completely absurd and who the heck like are those barbaric people that celebrated that as a sport so how do you quantify how skilled a teammate is let's get back to the original question uh, I would reserve judgment I would say the if you want to find truth, you need to look at statistics. So you say, how often does this person win games versus other people, and how often does he lose them? Is he? I think. I mean, I think the latter is a, is a perfect <laughs> quantification of that. Like, are they higher than you in the ladder? Or are they lower than you in the ladder? Uh, the ladder is also a system that can be gamed, so you can game the ladder, and then. You know, I play an off role, and all of a sudden, I'm I'm a plat three player instead of a diamond five player, or I play eighty carry, and then I'm gold instead of diamond or whatever. But uh, essentially, like, I'm not sure that there's value in quantifying how skilled a teammate is, and I'm not sure that there's a way to answer that truthfully. I think that uh, what you can look at is you can put the whole system together, and you can see how many games you win and lose. And then you can look for faulty parts. So you have uh, people who are like genius and they're trying hard. And then you have workhorses who are willing to put in the work and grind. Even though they're not good, they're going to get there. And then you have just like kind of, you could say assholes or like people that are not motivated to be in the place that they are or people that are, are not going to treat other people nicely or people that are not willing to put in the work. And those are the people that you like kind of want to push along out of your team because they're not going to become skilled enough to to play with you they're not going to grow even if they are talented it's not worth keeping them around because they're going to harm the system so i would say it's more important to quantify what kind of person you have as a teammate than how skilled they are because skill can be acquired through training and motivation francis asks how can we notice a bad habit that is working from a good habit that isn't working my fundamental belief is that everything should always be upgraded. So there is no good habit that, uh, there is no bad habit that is just working. It's just like every habit is a habit. If it works, it works great. Uh, it could be better. Uh, this could be a good habit and it's working great. It could be better. So I think that there's always a way to optimize. If you have something that's working well um, and it's a, it's a bad habit, what are the downsides of the bad habit? you have to find the downsides and see if they're worth the trade-off. And so I think like a better habit is one that has less downsides and less trade-off or that applies more universally. So let's say that I want to become a better 
League of Legends top laner, and I habitually pick tanks. So um, it's working because I'm winning games and I'm becoming a better player. But it's giving me bad habits because these juggernauts and tanks are like very forgiving to mistakes and all I have to do is rely on my team to win and statistically like kind of like carry out games from from dominance. Let's say that I want a better habit. So the downside is that I don't actually grow as fast personally and I don't have to take a lot of risks. What if I want a habit where I'm growing and learning league but I'm also taking more risks, playing more fearlessly, learning better reflexes and I want to like um make more cutthroat decisions in my business life then maybe you would switch to playing like squishy assassins because you always have to make the right decision or you're punished and you always have to play fearlessly um and you have to know your win condition and you have to like have more knowledge about how you would win the game than than playing a tank that just tps into the fight and zones so and and then also you can take that fearlessness and that aggression that you're training in yourself every single time that you get scared and you can bring it into your business life. So all of a sudden you have a better habit. The bad one was working. This one's working better. I think it's it's a question of optimization and then cost-benefit analysis. So how much time do you spend changing a bad, bad habit, quote-unquote, to a slightly better habit? And what about this habit over here? Here's an example of that. Today I could have spent more time working on the notes for this show uh, and I could have like I have a habit of creating these set of notes for the show, and I could make the habit better and like make it more improved, or I could have focused on on doing yoga and kettlebells, which is a habit for my physical health. And my my habit would be zero, not doing kettlebells to to one hundred percent like doing kettlebells. Uh, and so that the benefit of fixing that habit is way more than the benefit of fixing the note taking habit. Or the, not the note-taking habit, but the note preparation habit. So that's where I should spend my time. So you have to be, you have to realize that time is your is the only resource that matters. So pick the habits that you think will give the most bang for your buck as far as your life going forward, and then look for ways to optimize them and, and develop them, and improve them until you have to put in so much time to improve them that it's not worth the benefit. And then you move on to the next the next thing, uh, and come back to it later. So hopefully that was helpful, Francis. If we're talking about uh, we got a little abstract there talking about life. I hope that you can kind of find a way to apply that to the game if that's what you were uh, if that's what you were looking for. And I would like to end today with a quote from Seneca. Seneca was a Stoic Roman philosopher, by the way. A gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. Thanks for stopping by, and I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>